Hello, Mavericks. Imri here, and welcome to today's Market Roundup. It is Wednesday, November 29th. So not the most action-packed day in the markets, but there is still some stuff to talk about. So today we'll be doing a review of the trading day. We'll be going over any meaningful news, taking a look at the broader equity markets, and doing some commodity analysis as well. We're then going to take a look at current market conditions by uh, examining the major indices from a technical perspective. We'll look at market internals as well as the sector heat map for the S&P 500. And we're going to wrap up with some trading setups and opportunities. Let's get into it. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional stock and option traders. Maverick Trading is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80% of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. So starting off with some market analysis. Okay, so all the major indices, well, the, the Dow was, was slightly up on the day, but practically flat. Uh, the S&P and the Qs slightly down. Uh, the Russell up half a percent. Oil up quite a bit, one and three quarters of a percent. Gold up uh, one and a quarter percent. In, in daily news, U.S. GDP data came out. It was a little bit stronger than uh, than expected. Now that's going to that's that's interesting, right? Because um, we're in a weird spot right now where we we kind of want GDP to be a little bit weak because that would tell the Fed that their inflationary fighting measures are actually working. So strong GDP, you know, the, the market might actually take that as bearish news. I know it seems counterintuitive, but right now the primary narrative driving uh, this market higher is, is the understanding that the Fed is done hiking rates. So if we, if we have hotter GDP, that you know likely means the consumer is still strong and a strong consumer means that inflation could prove to be stubborn, which in turn means possibly requiring higher interest rates. Uh, now, that being said, you know, Fed watchers uh, are, are taking bets that cuts could come as early as March 2024. So although this GDP reading came in a little bit above expectations, it remains to be seen, you know, whether these Fed watchers uh, predictions about the economy weakening over the coming months is going to be true or not. I would personally be surprised if we get a cut by March. Seems a little bit early to me. Uh, yeah, that just seems a little bit too early, but we'll have to wait and see, of course. Uh, now, in terms of the advanced decline line, now, e even with the majority of issues, uh, sorry, even with the stock market being slightly down today as measured by the S&P 500, we can see that the majority of issues are actually advancing. And uh, over 70% of stocks are above their 50 period moving average. Now, when we take a look at an actual price chart for the S&P 500, you can see that we've, we've now started to get a gradual, gentle upward sloping in the 20 and 50 period moving averages. No surprise that we would pull back here around 4,600, the prior highs from the summer. Um, you know, we're quite a ways away from, from those moving averages. So, you know, whether you're flat out bearish or full on bullish, I still think, you know, regardless of which camp you fall into, I, I still think a, a reasonable expectation here would be, uh, you know, a pullback that, that gets us to maybe 4,500, 4,450 on the low side. Let's wait and see what happens. But, you know, I, I think that's a pretty reasonable expectation of this market at this stage. Now, the Q's no different. I, I'd like to see us go back to at least the 20 period moving average, roughly around 380 in the Q's. Now, the sector heat map is, uh, you know, it doesn't tell us too much about today. Tech obviously being down. It, tech is what's led this market higher. So on a day where we pull back, no surprise that some of the big names are a little bit down. Uh, yeah, you, you know, I mean, industrial is holding up pretty well. And healthcare is actually a sector I'm pretty bullish on as a whole. Um, and financials are, are holding up better than I would have expected. Okay, so, you know, the weekly outlook, un unless the slope of these moving averages really flattens out, I, I just don't really see us moving away from a plus three to end the week. Next week, we might get back to a plus two, but we'll see. Monthly outlook, 
So monthly outlook is pretty tough because we're coming up on December, right? Um, I have a strong feeling we might have already seen the majority of the Santa Claus rally just came a little bit early. We had a veritable melt up, uh, you know, for, for pretty much all of November. I'd be very shocked if we saw something similar in December. So I, I don't necessarily think we're going to sell off like crazy, but we do need to give up some of these gains to set us up for a nice 2024. Now, in terms of potential trades, I've got a few on the board here. Uh, this is actually one of those times where, in my opinion, it's probably better to move to cash and, and just wait and strategically go to cash on, on your open positions. That's what I'm doing anyway, but uh, there are still some names that I really like. Love GDX, uh, Gold Miners ETF, but there are, you know, obviously, if you wanted something higher beta, you can take a look at the individual components of GDX. Uh, I like the Home, home Builders ETF XHB and I like Abbott. Um, and, and then on the bearish trades, uh, I like ODFL and Schnitzer. So let's, let's take a look though. So here's GDX. What I like about GDX is that we've broken uh, above the neckline of this pretty clear and obvious inverse head and shoulders pattern in my opinion. I'd like to see us get to 36 or 37. I've been pounding the table on gold stocks for a while now and they're really taken off. I mean, we, we've gone up 10% in a little over uh, I think a little over over two weeks or so. So that's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, in terms of neutral trades, Vaxite kind of stuck in this range. You know, I mean, this is likely going to end up being a high base, but this is a high base that's been stretching on since May, and I don't see it breaking anytime soon. So I just see it kind of pinging sideways within this larger trading range. Now, admittedly, it is a fairly large range. We're talking roughly the high 53s to about $45 or so. So it's a pretty wide range, but nonetheless, I suspect we'll stay trading sideways in this one for a while longer. And then bearish, uh, look at ODFL, Old Dominion, Freightline. Uh, we had this strong breakdown. We did this very choppy, messy bear rally, and we've broken down again. We're below both moving averages. Uh, I'd be curious to see if we can take out the, uh, the October lows. I, I think it's certainly possible. Um, so to wrap things up, here's tomorrow's outlook. The market's pulling back, but ultimately I, I think there's a little bit more upside to go before we get a much larger pullback. Uh, you know, I, I, I think it's tough because maybe we have 30, 40 points of upside and, and potentially 100 or more points of, down, points of, of downside ultimately. So I, I think the risk is starting to skew the other direction. Now, I'm still bullish um, in, in the intermediate to, to long term, you know, especially, especially as we head into the, into the new year and probably the first half of the new year. But I, I wouldn't be shocked at all if we got a, you know, 100, 150 point pullback at some point. And, and I think the risk is starting to skew that in that direction. Hence why, you know, I, although I'm, my, my longer term conviction is somewhat bullish at this moment, uh, based on the price action, you know, I, it's very tough when when the short term price action is, is saying that that we, you know, we're, we're not seeing a major pullback yet, but it is in the cards, I think. And that's why in a situation like that, uh, I like to go to, to, to cash, wait, and only take the most clear and obvious setups. As far as economic reports go, we've got unemployment claims and core PCE to round up the week. And then earnings reports, we've got Dell, Kroger's, Alta, um, and IoT. So keep an eye out for those names. Could be some movement there as well. All right, traders, that's it for me. Short and sweet. Hope this was helpful. Look forward to talking to you in a couple of weeks. Bye for now.